Welcome to the Happy Healthy Life Podcast with your hosts, Rob and Randy, who reveal the truth, the lies, and confusion about health so that you are no longer the victim to mainstream medical dogma and you are the hero to your own happy, healthy story. Good morning and happy, healthy Tuesday morning. It's a terrific Tuesday and we are on the Happy Healthy Life podcast with your host, Rob and Randy. We and are the happy, happy healthy, healthy guys. guys. What is going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, so we got a great episode today because uh, we've been wondering what in the health is going on uh, right now with uh, the state of the world. Uh, right now, uh, you may know people who have been complaining of being, quote, sick. We're going to talk about that because of this flu thing. It's uh, getting annoying, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, how many people keep on saying they are sick? We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about unveiling the power of the innate healing inside your body and then expose the germ theory. Uh, the germ theory that we were all taught when we were kids. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some solutions to what it is that's happening when our body starts expressing health with this thing that we call the flu, because this is something that affects us all. I know if you're an employer and you're listening to this, you've got people who are calling in sick. <laughs> you want to make sure that those people are not calling in sick and have an excuse to not show up to work. So let's get let's get started. Let's talk about what it is that's happening right now, because it really is uh, is everywhere. And, and those of you guys who are listening, you've probably heard somebody talking about just not feeling well or, or having the, quote, flu. And when it comes to the flu, uh, what is your feeling about the flu, Dr. Randy? Well, this this is a very, uh, it's a very nuanced topic, but just to break it down, the whole idea that viruses cause disease is just comical in my opinion because it really goes back to the the flaws that are in the germ theory but guys remember the, the flu season always happens when it's halloween all the way through new year's and two of the cold weather the bad food choices too much alcohol you know you're inside more breathing in the same air you're not outside you're not getting sunlight all the factors that go in to help and keep you feeling good and strong yeah. happened during the quote flu season. Where did the flu virus go the rest of the year, right? Why is it only during a certain time of year? So here's what we know to be true is that if germs and viruses cause disease, there wouldn't be anybody living to talk about it. It's just not true. In fact, I'm going to read you uh, a quote here, Dr. Rob. You guys are going to like this. This is from Dr. Robert Mendelson. And this is why the flu viruses back bacteria, germs, pathogens, why this whole germ theory is so vital to the medical model. They they need us to believe in this so bad for modern medicine to exist. But this comes from Dr. Robert Mendelssohn, a medical doctor, and then he wrote in the Confessions of a Medical Heretic, he said that modern medicine, basically, it's, a, it's a, an establishment of a modern church. He goes, modern medicine can't survive without our faith our faith and our belief in the germ theory, because modern medicine is neither an art nor a science. It's a religion. It's a belief system. It's not even scientific. The germ theory is a lie, yet if we believe it, they have us. And this is why the flu, every single year, they scare everybody into thinking that this virus is going around make, making people sick. If that was true, then everybody should be getting sick because we're all exposed to the flu virus. Yeah, absolutely. And it's weird, too, because ever since ever since I was a kid, you always knew that that time of year was the flu season. It's kind of like you've got football season, then you've got the Super Bowl. So when it comes to sickness, illness and disease, it's like that time of year is the Super Bowl yeah. when it comes to the pharmaceutical industry. Right. You're right. You see all these 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 ads and commercials for pharmaceuticals, oh, yeah. all these ads and the propaganda, even in the Super Bowl, because all the things that are being advertised for are all the things that weaken the body's immune system. We're going to talk about things to actually improve the immune system. So, of course, people concept. would be yeah expressing health during this, quote, Super Bowl and Super Bowl of, of health. It's not the Super Bowl of health during that season. It's actually the Super Bowl of disease, dyshyphenies, the body being not in a state of ease because of all of the different stresses that have been put onto the body during that time. Think about what's happening over the, over the course of that period as well. 
you've got Halloween, you're stuffing yourself full of all these candies and giving yourself permission to just not take care of yourself. All of a sudden, everybody gets busy because they get busy. They stop their mindfulness practices. Yeah. They're not sleeping well. They've got stress. You've got the holidays coming up. You've got the holiday parties. All of the excuses to not give yourself your body what it needs to be healthy and then disconnect you from the ease, which is where the where the word disease actually comes from. It's dis hyphen ease. Now people's bodies are not in a state of ease. And what the medical system would have you believe is that lack of ease is actually the flu because if they can call it the flu, then they can give you something. And then it goes back to that religion that you've been taught ever since the you know, the, the modern medical era even started because without them teaching you that, there would be no money for them to, to be made. It's, it's actually really pure evil. Yeah, and that's why I always call it the medical cult. It really is something that you have to have belief in. You have to believe that there's these dangerous, you know, the germ theory states, there's all these microbes and germs and bacteria and pathogens that are waiting to invade our bodies. They're they're on doorknobs. They're, they're lying underneath your bed like the boogeyman waiting to attack you. And there's really nothing you can do except get your shots, take your drugs, take your antibiotics, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. But this whole way of thinking, this cult mindset, this religion, it's really a dogma. It just isn't a science because the germ theory is the most important thing to the medical modern establishment. They need us to fear these little microscopic things that we can't see, yet we know that greater is he, Dr. Rob, that is within us. And we already know 1 John 4, 4 doesn't lie, but even if you didn't even read or believe the Bible, it's not a religious statement. It is a fact that the greatest doctor is on the inside. All health comes from inside out. Your body's ability to adapt to your environment is the key. It's not the outside, it's the inside. Yeah. That is paramount to this discussion. It is, and I and I was writing this morning, and this is, this is what I was writing, and, and here, here, here's what I, I truly believe that we do um, as the happy, healthy guys, um, as somebody who actually speaks on behalf of everybody who listens to us, really on the on behalf of humanity is what it's about. And here's here's what I wrote. I said all this, this being medicine, the germ theory, steps back as truth comes forth in you. We're going to talk about that to lead your brothers from the ways of death. I believe that that you being us, Randy, myself, happy, healthy. We set them on a way to happiness, set the people who are listening to us on their way to happiness. Their suffering is but an illusion, yet they need a guide to lead them out of it, for they mistake illusion for truth, and we walk them back to God. So we're going to mm, talk about good. that, and not as, like you said, as a religious statement. It doesn't really matter who it is you are. There's obviously a higher power at work here, and I think that's all all but forgotten, really, in what it is that we've learned, what we've been taught our whole entire life. So it let, seems like the smarter yeah. that we, quote, get, the further we move away from the foundational principles that God has given us. Does everybody kind of see that? I mean, you think about that. It's really every, we get so smart, we get so smart that we're literally outsmarting ourselves as we continue. Because if we're really that smart and God's laws are wrong, then apparently we should be getting healthier. We're getting sicker every day. It's not happening. There's more sick people right now than ever before. We know this, which is why we do exist. And we, the work that we do and that you guys do who listen to us is so important. But we have to know how to articulate this stuff because we have friends and family and people saying and regurgitating all of these lies that we believed over the years. Even like somebody who would say, I heard this this uh, this last week, and I think I've been mentioning this to you, where... <laughs> You know, somebody was talking about, you know, getting this uh, this big boost. They go, yeah, it was like a it was like a shot in the arm, and that was talking about giving somebody a boost. So I'm like, they're referring, are they referring to a they getting a, a vaccine? Get, sticking what's, what's a, happening here? A, a toxic chemicals into our into our body, and that's giving us a boost. But that's like things we say we don't even think about it any longer because we've been conditioned and programmed just like you would in a cult. You wouldn't drink that Kool-Aid if you were thinking logically, but you would take that shot and then you would regurgitate it and say, hey, you know, that's a shot in the arm. I'm getting a boost. Where in the heck did that come from? It's conditioning and grooming. And it starts at a very early age, which is why we got to wake up. We got to start telling the truth. We got to be more loud, more proud, more bold. 
um, and tell the truth to every single person we can get to. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about some of the myths when it comes to uh, medicine, medical healing, because we got to get to the problem, right? We got to meet people exactly where it is that they're at, right? Yeah. So that you can be able to understand, okay, what what is the solution? What really is is the lie? So that we can be able to then share the truth. Yeah. So let's talk about what are some of the conventional treatments right now that mask the symptoms without getting to the root cause. So like if somebody does say, and you hear somebody say, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I think I've got that thing that's going around, right? right? And then they ultimately end up calling it, yeah, it's that that flu thing that's going on right now. So what does traditional worldly thinking teach us to do when we have that flu? Well, you immediately, your, your mindset goes to taking drugs, right? We have to now suppress the symptoms and the disease is the healing process. It's the purification. It's the body getting rid of the toxins. It's the body healing, doing the right thing. Your body's not doing the wrong thing. It's doing the right okay, thing. Because okay, your body's so, never trying to kill you, Dr. Rob. It's yeah, always trying to heal you. So because of that, so let's go back then going, okay, so if somebody is taking medicine, right. okay, and whatever for it, whether it's the Theraflu or the Tylenol or the whatever those things, and what you're saying now is the body is always trying to do the right thing under those conditions to heal it. So by putting those medicines in the body, what's actually really then happening to um, that person's body if their body is also trying to heal it at the same time? Well, it's bad enough that you're expressing symptoms of healing with vomiting or fever or the chills or diarrhea. Now you're taking on the drugs on top of that. You know, it's kind of like when I got diagnosed with cancer, it was bad enough that my body metabolically was sick. The thought of now drugging myself into health never crossed my mind because like it's bad enough that I put myself in a metabolic situation where my body's not adapting very well. So, you know, for example, let's just talk about fever, yep. which is, you know, what are we told about fever? You know, oh my God, you, I have a fever. You gotta it's get a, it what? Or I'm gonna die. Yeah, right. So you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get the fever down, you or, gotta or you could die. I'm like, bro, sister, <laughs> um, your temperature is only like 99 degrees. You're not gonna die. Yeah. And guess what? Fever is not going to kill you anyway, because it's your body doing the right thing. And some of you are going to say, well, no, we know that it gets too high. It causes brain damage. All right. Show me the research on that. I've never seen it. Can fevers get high and make you feel horrible? No doubt about it. The only way to cause brain damage from heat is an external heat. So if you left your child in the back of your car with the windows up here in Texas in August, that external heat could damage the brain, but the internal heat from a fever is not going to do that. It's just not true. And it's a fear they baked into us to bring it down. So the only fear from a fever is dehydration, right? That's the fear. So keep hydrated, but we've been so scared that these germs have infiltrated our body, fever spiking up, and now you got to drive it down when the body's going, no, I'm trying to heal you. I'm not trying to harm you. One basic example, even when they give these kids the these shots and they stick this, this these materials, toxic materials into our kids, when they tell you if the kid runs a fever, to bring it down, which is the worst thing you could do because obviously Tylenol depletes your glutathione, which is a part of the detoxification process, which is why your body's running a fever to begin with because you just got injected with toxins. So we've got to start changing the way we think. What's really true? What's not true? And you got to remember too. This is I always say this is you got to follow the money. The burden of proof isn't on you, and it's not on me, Doctor Rob. It's on the for-profit pharmaceutical industry and the medical cartel who depends on us living in fear. Yeah, and it goes back to I mean, just using your your critical logic logical thinking, right? It's it's really just this simple. You know, no different than if I've got chicken in my refrigerator. Um, I'm not probably not going to eat that chicken raw. There could be some kind of bug in there that my, my body would then express health to get it out. It would still be a healthy response, yeah, right? Yeah, body's doing the right thing if it's throwing up and puking and getting rid of it. Yeah, but I, I, I don't want that healthy response to be happening in, in, in my body. So I'm going to go ahead and cook it in order to be able to kill that inside there. So think about what it is that your body is doing when it's heating up. For every degree that it goes up over its your, your quote, natural internal body temperature, 
something else is, is being secreted from the body for the healing of your body. So with every temperature that goes up, something else is coming out, a different, uh, a different immune antibody for whatever it is that's going on there that's called natural immunity. So your body has got this natural immune system that's happening and it knows exactly what it is, what it is to do. And like you said, you talked about first John 4, 4, and let's get into really the solutions for this thing as we get as we, we as we go into that the first solution is this is you've got to change your mind you've got to change your belief system and how it is or what it is that you believe in healing right are you going to believe in an outside in approach or are you going to neg negate the above down inside out being god actually creating our bodies to heal and to be well first john 4 4 greater is he who is in you but also Here's what it also says, and again, not a religious statement. I found this to be true. I always like to test these things that I see in the Bible, but here's what it says. It says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, I, one of the words, and I highlighted this word in here, and the word that I highlighted was test, okay? Because what I do love about God is he, he never gives us a test that he didn't already give us the answer to, right? It's like in school, you know, the teacher wouldn't give you a test unless they had already given you the pages to read that have the answers to the test or gone over that with you so that you can actually now apply. So the test is you applying that, 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 that wisdom. So you will be test tested. Absolutely. I can remember my kids, you know, when their temperature would go up because they were expressing health and, and nothing will test you more than being a parent who is the caretaker of these kids and watching your kids not feeling good, right? So when you when you see your kids that they have a fever, they've got stuff coming out of their, their nose, the one thing as a parent is you don't ever want them to feel bad, but when your belief is in, the body is doing what it's supposed to be doing, you understand that that's nothing more than an expression of health. So, so the drugs are for the parents is what the drugs are for, so you can feel better about your kid not hurting or feeling bad. You know, it's like... You probably didn't even have a thermometer in your home. No, the not kids, at all. Because if you take the temperature, then you're going to have a certain a level of fear attached totally. to what you think it should be. Well, what should the temperature be when you take it? Well, they say, quote, normal is 98.6, but I don't know that we're all exactly the same. So when you're taking something, what should it be? And the answer is you have no idea what the temperature should be. You don't know. Your doctor doesn't know. Your best friend down the street who's a nurse doesn't know. The body knows because the body's not trying to kill you. It's trying to heal you. And it's going to put that temperature exactly where it needs to be. So having emotion over what temperature is, that's a you thing. That's not a God thing because your body knows what to do. You just want to help create and support the right environment so the body can do exactly what it needs to do. Remember, the body doesn't need help healing. It needs no interference. Don't ever forget that. So what's really cool with even, even with my kids is the one thing that they don't ever say they never ever say I'm sick. Oh, I hate ever. when I hear that. It's it's like not even in their vocabulary. <laughs> they don't even understand what that means. I have heard them say, "Hey, my body is expressing health today," but what they don't say is my body is is sick. And so, as we say that, people always ask, "Well, what do you do when your kids are expressing health now?" In other words, what they're saying is, "What do you do when your kids are sick?" Right? <laughs> and so they still will go back to that vernacular. Yep. Okay. I understand. I get it. It's going to take you some while, a, a while, to be able to change that belief system. But let's talk about some solutions to that. And I know for myself, if I've got a kid who is expressing health, the very first thing that they ask me is this: They're always in. It's they're so pitiful though when they're feeling this way. I, I no, I'm, probably, the, they, I'm the worst. Yeah, they probably get it from me. <laughs> I'm um, very pitiful when I'm expressing <laughs> symptoms of eating. Yes, very, very needy and whiny. Yes, it is. <laughs> and so when they go into that place the the first thing that they say is dad can you adjust me so being a chiropractor by profession 
that sometimes really warps people's minds because they're like, I thought you adjusted people as a chiropractor to help them with their neck pain or their back pain. No, that has nothing to do with why it is that I'm adjusting them. I'm adjusting them because the innate wisdom that flows through the brain to the spinal cord that receives that from God above down and inside out is being interfered with. I want to make sure that I'm opening up that pathway from the brain down to the rest of the body so there's nothing being interfered with and there's a clear channel of communication going from above from above down and then inside out so their body has everything that it needs in order to be able to fight whatever it is that's happening inside their body and almost a hundred percent of the time I adjust them they go to sleep your body needs rest as a solution as well they wake up, everything's good, everything's wonderful, and they are back to normal. Dude, I so love that you said that. You know, that's such a, a key piece. The neurological component to health is vital. Clear nervous uh, nervous system is vital. So the adjustment, you weren't treating a, a fever or a condition. You were just removing interference to the greatest doctor in the world who lives inside of us, that innate intelligence, that ability to go and do and heal and do everything that it knows how to do I love that you said that. And that's something that really changed uh, our lives because once we got introduced to chiropractic, now that we become chiropractors, we're still teaching these principles of above, down, inside, and out that are timeless principles. These aren't belief statements. These are just absolute facts. Your body is designed to heal. That's why creating that environment where your body can adapt and heal is so critical. Yet none of that's obviously taught in the medical model. The medical model is, is a fear-based model. It needs you to be scared. It needs you to, to live in fear. It needs you to not believe what we're saying. It needs you to believe that you're broken, that disease is the normal. Guys, health is the normal. Disease is the abnormal. It's common to see people diseased everywhere, but guys, that is not normal. That is not the way God intended this thing to play itself out. But you keep breaking enough laws of health with the toxic foods, the toxic chemicals, suppressing all your symptoms with drugs, the bad mindset, not living in gratitude. We could keep going, not moving your body, not eating real food, processed sugar, seed oil, all these things are creating an environment where your body's no longer adapting very well. And so we blame it on a germ or a virus or the time of year, yet it's really an inside out thing every single time. So you've got to respect that. A lot of times when your body's going through those, those symptoms, you really should be thankful for it because it's like, man, what an opportunity for my body to purify and detox and heal and get stronger that really, that disease, quote, disease process really is the healing process that your body's doing. We should be thankful for that. Yeah, we should absolutely be thankful. And when it comes down to our bodies, even at a molecular level, our body is, is, is made up of trillions of cells and there's an energy frequency as well. That's why that was even part of what it is that, that, that helped you there when you were in Spain with, with your cancer. Yeah, so there's the this real this, healing arts. Yeah. So there's this energy and that's why, um, in, in, if you, if you want to, if you want to age someone, you can prove this theory by, if you ever had the TV, any of you guys ever had the T the TV set with the antennas, right. And your, and your parents used to use you as the remote control before <laughs> remote, con remote controls were a thing. And they'd go, Hey, go change the, go change the channel or they'd go, hey, stick your hand up and you would go like change the, the antenna and all of a sudden it would get, get clear and then you would move your, your hand away from it and it would be fuzzy again. Yep. Well, that's an energy right there. That's a connection, right? And so when we, when we lose that and it's disrupted by everything that you're talking about right there, it throws the body out of balance and then your body's going to be a lot less likely to be able to heal. So another solution to this, to be able to get that energy back and we actually have this in this room right next door um, to us is even utilizing red light therapy to be able to help to reset this this energy and this this communication going on inside the body to be able to help reset the mitochondria that's inside the body as well so that could be a, another aid or another help there's a sauna in the room next door to us as well so we can be able to then go jump in the sauna in order to be able to detox the body take all of those things out that are disrupting that energy inside the body to be able to put yourself back into a state of flow or to naturally heat the body up 
so that it can be able to take care of whatever's going on inside there. So you're like literally inducing a fever to the body. Uh -huh. I did uh, I did oncological hyperthermia in Spain when I was, you know, as you guys know, my story had late stage cancer, had moved into multiple organs and into my lymphatic tissue. They were heating me up to very high temperature internally because your body is going to kick out interferon, which obviously is a big part of the immune system. Yep. And obviously healthy cells can adapt very well to high heat. Damaged disease cells don't adapt well, and so they die. It's just how the body works. That is an artificially induced fever. Yep. In fact, it was interesting how you know oncological hyperthermia came into play. It was really developed out of a small village in Italy where they had all these stagnant waters yep. and swamps where there was lots of mosquitoes and they were seeing high rates of malaria and so, of course, man always gets smarter than God and you start making drugs and chemicals called DDT, uh, which is a neurotoxin. Uh, that's a whole nother story we'll go, we won't go down today, but they were spraying this to kill all the malaria and they started having, of course, or to spray to kill the mosquitoes. But although malaria rates were going down, guess what was going through the roof? Cancer rates, right? Because people who get malaria would have high fevers and high fevers strengthen the immune system. So it's kind of like you're always trying to outsmart God and there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, out of Proverbs, there's a way to death is what it says. So you just can't outsmart God and Robin Peter to pay Paul never really fixes anything. Yeah, exactly. So there's, I mean, there's so many different things that that, that, that can be done. And, and another thing too, which is super important is different mindful mindfulness practices, right? Whether it's meditation to re reduce stress in the body right which changes the energy inside the inside the body as well so you can meditate you can ground you can sun gaze there's so many things laughter i remember and you may remember this movie as well again aging myself again uh patch adams the movie right that was laughter was his medicine that's yeah. how that's how he would help to heal people not only through that but with community and i had the the fortune of back, gosh, this was when I was in chiropractic school. I had a buddy that wanted to meet Patch Adams, and he literally called this phone number in his book, and Patch Adams literally answered the phone. So my buddy, <laughs> Matt, serious? yeah, my, did you not know the story? I think I remember you like, telling me this, but yeah. So my buddy, Matt, goes, hey, Rob, do you want to go to Washington, D.C. with me? He lives in, uh, he lives in Virginia. I don't know if he still lives there. But he's like, do you want to go with me? And I'm like, sure. He's like, we're going to his house to meet him. I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah. So we go. He lives in this townhouse there in Arlington, Virginia. And uh, we knock on the door. And this, he doesn't look anything like Robin Williams, by the way. If you've never, you can Google his <laughs> he photo. He does not, yeah. At all. So he's like, you know, he's like 6'1". This tall guy comes to the door and he's got, and this is before blue hair was actually a cool thing. Half of his hair is blue, and uh, and and his hair was long. He's got an earring in his ear that's a fork, right? And dressed like a literally like a clown, circus clown. Yeah, yeah. So we go we go inside the house. We go upstairs. He doesn't have there's there's no there's no furniture um in 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 the room. And as we're walking up the stairs, I'm like, did he do what I think he just did? I'm like, what is that? So he had walked by and I heard this noise and then my buddy walks by and hears the same noise. And I'm like, I think he just farted and passed gas <laughs> walking up there. So we're walking up the stairs. He didn't, he had this little figurine that anytime that you would walk by it, it would make a farting noise. That's awesome. And so I'm cracking up, everybody's laughing. We get down there, and and the one thing that I remember about the conversation, because we were talking about healing, and by the way, he didn't use medicine at all. He was like, healing is all about laughter in community. And uh, he talked to us about his kids. His kids were named Zig and Zag. I thought that was interesting. And so, so I asked the question. I said, I said, what is it that caused you and i'll never forget this i said what is it that caused you to start living so far outside the box i never forget his answer his answer was very simple he goes rob what box there is no box this is all god's container and if this is all god's container 
there is no separation from God's healing. And when we can tap into that and use what he's given us, and he was talking about laughter, use laughter, then we could truly heal the entire planet. So mindfulness and doing something that's going to make you laugh. I know one of the things that we absolutely love, um, probably more than most things other than my family, is I, for myself, love music. So we heard there was going to be this DJ plan this last Friday night who's amazing. So we go and just the music, the vibration of the music, the smiles. I don't know if we've laughed that much good. in a long, long time, but just simply that was enough to change and community my community too. In community, Being we were with our, our best, best friends, friends. Yeah. and just and just even watching the, the 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 DJ was smiling. DJ, I told him I give him a shout out. DJ Eric Rhodes, um, smiling, and you should have seen just everybody there had a smile on their face. Right? It, yeah. It's hard to be pissed off when you're happy <laughs> it's those, impossible those actually two things yeah they don't really go together so, if, if you're pissed off you're not happy if you're happy you're not you're not pissed off for sure yeah so what a, what what a great thing so whatever whatever gets you happy change the vibration of the cells inside your body get in vibration with god's frequency and not the world's frequency mm -hmm. um there is no box i think the box is the world yeah, it's it's all the lies and, and the limiting beliefs that we adopt over a lot of our lives that we almost have to unbrainwash ourselves and start over. And I'm speaking for myself, you know, I'm almost everything that I believed, you know, growing up and in my 30s, 40s, and I'll be uh, I'll be 50 this summer, which is insane to me. But I've had to relearn a lot of things because I started mm -hmm. asking different questions. Remember, the quality of your life we believe is the quality oh, of the questions that you ask yourself. And once you start asking questions, you really start finding out, wow, that maybe isn't the way that I thought it to be. I, I can even remember like uh, back, I remember the last time I ever took a medication. Remember, I left the medical cartel back in 1999. And I remember the last medication that I ever put in my body uh, was I, uh, you know, I would get strep throat every year, right? And so of course, what was I trained to do? You go to your doctor and what are they gonna give you? They're going to give you antibiotics. By the way, anti means against, biotic means life. Why in the H-E double hockey stick would we be swallowing anti-life pills or injections? That doesn't even make any sense, by the way. Uh, oh, and by the way, too, just so you know, um, everybody, if you swab their throat, test positive for streptococcus. Whether you have strep throat, or you don't, going back to the germ theory that germs cause disease, that is a bunch of bull malarkey, as we say here in the great state of Texas. But I remember I uh, I took the, I, I went to the doctor, I started taking the medication, I took one pill, and I threw the rest in the trash can, and I was like, you know what, I'm tired of this model, this doesn't make any sense, because I would always get it again, it would come back worse, I would never able ever to trust my body, and I finally, for the first time in my life, I trusted my body to do what it does great, which is heal, and it did. So There's was it concept. really, yeah, was it really the streptococcus bacteria that was making me sick, or maybe it was that same time of year that I would always get sick when I'm not sleeping as well, when I'm stressed out, when I'm eating bad food, having too much alcohol, staying out too late, all the things I was doing potentially back then in 1999. So I've never had it again. I've never ever once had that situation again. And I haven't taken a single Advil since 1999. We're just over reliant on a system that has lied to us and told us that you have to fear germs, viruses, and bacteria in order to be healthy. Because uh, obviously being healthy means you're deficient in drugs. So you need to take drugs to be healthy. Remember, if you give drugs to a sick person, it makes them, uh, doesn't make them healthy. If you give drugs to a healthy person, it makes them sick. These are all lies that we believe. So we've got to ask better questions, break out of the model, stop living in fear. The system needs us to be scared in order to monetize this thing. And I'm just not going to live in fear because I already know, Dr. Rob, not to be on a religious tangent today. Well, but it's not religion. It's just facts, man, <clears throat> that God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. Sound mind means discipline intentional living every single day, waking up and making decisions based off the truth. That's the life that I want to live. And I know that's the life you guys want to live.
Absolutely. Uh, my favorite part of that was the whole love part, right? Yeah. So as it seems like that's been the theme uh, today, and 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 we love you guys. We love um, the fact that that you're here. Um, you guys are taking the action steps to do what needs to be done in order to be healthy. I know a lot of people, many times when they meet us, when it does come to the flu and or any kind of ailment, they want to know exactly what nutrient they need to put in their body, what food that they need to put in their body. Here's what I would say for today's episode, because there's so many episodes that we do have of the podcast where we talk about those things. And so for today, I think it's it's really about just changing your belief. Yeah, that's change that. change that belief Most system important. because when you change that belief system, you're gonna you're gonna take actions that are gonna be in alignment with what those beliefs are. Yeah, and your core your core belief is going to dictate the decisions that you make. So that is the message today. It's yeah. change this, change the way you think. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We want to repeat that one more time. The best doctor is inside of you, and that doctor is never trying to kill you. It's always working on your behalf know it, believe it, trust that. And if you know that to be true, you're going to work on creating an environment where that doctor can thrive and flourish. Um, so pretty cool walking around knowing that the best doctor's on the inside. That's not living fear. That's living in love, power, and a very sound mind. So we Spe love you guys. Speaking of speaking of love and doctors, Dr. Love is actually in the house. Today. Ah, I saw so, that, Dr. So, Anil. So yeah. lo hey. lo love seeing you here. Congratulations as well on the uh, the baby that is on the way. Um, has, thank you, thank uh, you. She had the baby yet? Uh, it's on its way. We're, we're in bated breath here, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, we yeah. love we love seeing you. We'll have to get you here on the podcast uh, portion uh, soon for sure, because when it does come to mindfulness, you are the man when it comes to that. So we'll do that on the following episode. Again, thank you so much for listening to the Happy Healthy Life podcast. Like it, share it, Please. comment. Um, rate it, review all the things because it's this right here that helps people to really know the truth when it comes to health, wellness, and living the happiest, healthiest life possible. We love you. We appreciate you. Thanks for listening to the Happy Healthy Life Podcast. If you enjoy the show, make sure to follow them on Instagram at the H2 Life or on YouTube and Facebook at The Happy Healthy Guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts.